right now I'll be talking about the T51R, which is our, our new multi beam. Um, and we released that last year, Q3, end of last year. Um, and what's special about the T51R is that it operates at 7 to 800 kilohertz. Right, that's the main thing that you need to know. Um, if you're very busy, this is the take home message. Right? If you're interested, please stay. Um, I'll tell you something more. So, this is the main thing 7 to 800 kilohertz. And because, of course, it's a higher frequency, we have smaller beam widths. The smaller beam widths mean a higher resolution. So, uh, we have half by a quarter degree beam widths. So it means you can measure really, really small objects. It still has a 400 kilohertz band, so 350 to 430, and that will still give you a one by half degree beam width. So this is what it looks like, and actually it looks very much the same as a T50, if you've seen a T50 before. So uh, transmit and receiver. The transmit and receiver are different uh, because they are now capable of operating at 800 kilohertz. The, uh, the whole patterns are the same, so placing them in, in a standard bracket would be the same or any type of mounting you would have. The cabling is also the same between the T50, between all the T-series actually, so that's the same. Uh, and then we have our, our rack-mounted sonar processor, um, uh, which also comes with a, a built-in uh, GNS INS, so there's the, uh, the IMU for that. Lots of the other features that uh, you may be familiar with with the T50, uh, um, you, you would find as well. So lots of features like adaptive gates tracker, multi-detect, um, X-range giving a longer range performance, uh, flex mode, um, uh, spacing your beams in a, in a clever fashion, and of course it comes with 1024 beams, and the swath width is up to 170 degrees. Right? So you know, you couple the 170 degrees with 1024 beams, Beams, beam widths of uh, half by a quarter degree, you, know, you can get a really nice resolution, uh, you can nice surveys and you can cover lots of ground, you know, high quality, high quality data. So in terms of resolution, you might hear us say a factor of four better. Um, what we mean with that is uh, the beam widths, um, because we double the frequency, uh, we half the beam widths, so where we went from one degree uh, in a long track, it's now half a degree, and where we went from a half a degree across track, it's now a quarter of a degree. So the way to look at it is um, you now have two of your beam footprints to where you otherwise had one beam footprint at 400 kilohertz. Uh, so that's why we say you, you, you increase resolution by four times. Um, another way of thinking about it, um, and then, and maybe this will stick better. Is uh, imagine at 800 of uh, eight, eight meters at eight meters at 800 kilohertz, you'd have a nadir, a beam footprint, roughly the size of, of an egg yolk, right? So that's a really small area where you're measuring. And that kind of defines the, uh, the the ambiguity of your your measurement as well. And then uh, this is where we were coming from, 400 kilohertz. So that's the the whole egg, as you like. Um, so just. Uh, if you like me, a visual person, that's an easier way of, of remembering it. So our receiver has then the, the two arrays. So there's the, uh, the 800 kilohertz and the 400 kilohertz array. Right? And uh, you might hear us coin the phrase true 800 kilohertz array or dedicated 800 kilohertz array. What we mean with that is that um, we've actually built the array so that it is so it works at 800 kilohertz only. So um, if you imagine the way the array is built, you have lots of little hydrophones, right? And they need to be spaced a certain uh, half a wavelength apart. And the wavelength is a function of frequency. So because we're now at 800 kilohertz, that's really small, it's a, f a fraction of a millimeter. So it's really difficult to manufacture these things, uh, to, to, to carve it up in, in such a small, small spacing uh, and make it in such. So, that's 800 kilohertz array. Why is that? Why is that good? Um, well, we could just take a 400 kilohertz array and push a two, uh, 800 kilohertz signal through it. It works, but it comes at a cost. And uh, and this is the cost. That's what you see. So here is your flat seabed, and here is also your seabed, and there is your seabed. Those are just gating loads. 
right? And this is this is the result of that. So effectively, it means that you you can't really use most of the swap. Right? Uh, the data quality isn't as great because you're using you're not using the optimum frequency for that array, and you have to say goodbye to your whole swap. Right? So that's what we mean with a dedicated 800 kilohertz array, right? You can use the you can now use the full the full swath width, so you don't have the whole swath at 800 kilohertz, right? So no compromises uh, on that front. So here are some images where we're going over a rec. This is at four, that's at 800 kilohertz. I'll play them. Uh, this is a little video, just a couple things to pay attention to. You're going to see some debris here, which is much more defined in the 800 kilohertz. You're going to see a little davit or a little crane here that will be better defined. And then at the end, you'll see an anchor line as it comes out. So as I play this off, kind of try to pay attention to those areas, and, and, and then you'll see, you'll see the difference. So there's, there's the debris at starboard there. And you see the, the davit or the, the crane. Uh, and so the overall, there's there's more more detail. Did you see the anchor? You can get detections all the way down to the seabed at 800 kilohertz. It gives you an idea of the, the, the target detection capability because uh, the anchor is a, you know quite small, small links. Um, and uh, and here you see we're not we're not being able to detect the full the full anchor chain. Yeah, this is what this is what that vessel looked like. So you'll see there's um. There's a crane or a boom arm on there, and um, I'll just maybe I'll just replay this video again, and then you'll see that it's really well defined in the 800 kilohertz. There it comes. There it is. Right. And then there you got your debris. Much more detections. Much more definition on the debris. Right. So it gives you also an idea. This could be. Uh, a pipe or a cable that's kind of a similar size object. Okay, so 800 kilohertz high frequency trade off, of course, is, is your range performance, right? I think that's acceptable. We use this system at really super, super shallow water. Um, so we did some tests and see at which point we actually lose signal that it just becomes unusable, and uh, we were quite surprised uh, by the results. So. Uh, so here, roughly, this is roughly 30, 35 meters, and we're getting a swath width of 145 degrees. Uh, these, these outer beams you probably clip off, and then you have a swath width of 140 degrees, which is quite impressive, considering it's an 800 kilohertz system. Then we went, we went further, went as far as 65, 75 meters, and still getting a swath of 120 degrees. That surprised me, because I didn't expect we could use uh, such a high frequency at, at these water depths. Uh, that kind of shows you the, the capability of the system, but in general, we'd expect this is going to be used in shallow, super shallow water. So here's a video of where this is what real live data looks like. So that's 800 kilohertz, 1024 beams. Um, just going over that barge here. So we're going to be fast. Let me, let me do that again. So you probably observe how clean the data is, right? We're not fil there's no filtering in real time happening here. A um, couple of interesting things. See, you see the bollards here. You can see the two sides of the bollards, right? Uh, remember again, these are all these little little dots on the or footprints on the seabed, little egg yolks, right? And kind of see what type of resolution we get. There's a, a cable coming across. And again, cables are quite difficult to detect because one thing they're small and they're round and they're circular. So if you send sound onto it, it probably bounces off. So often you only get the, really the crown of the cable. They're very hard to detect, but. Um, so there's a crane or a, a cable or a wire, and that goes across. So we get some good detections of that. Let me just play it again for you. So 
so there, there's that cable then. This, by the way, this is the data that uh, comes from our Sonar UI. That's the software that comes with the with the multi-beam, right? And, and that's what you generally use to, 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 to operate it. Uh, and again, this is just you know real real-time data, untouched, no filters. Some other examples here. We're going uh, just in a, in a harbor area when we think. This system would be very suitable at 800 kilohertz, um, finding small objects uh, on the seabed. In this case, there's some sandbags here. There's obviously uh, some rock being dumped against the key wall for scow protection. There's the key wall itself, right? We get some nice, good detections off the key wall. These are, these are all areas where we, we expect uh, the T51 is going to be used a lot. I have some more examples of that here, too. We think about key walls, right? It can be quite challenging areas. We have a, you know, it's easy enough to measure something that's flat on the seabed, but here we have a, a vertical structure, and then more so where we have these corrugated key walls, and you have the, the front, the front and, and aft, right? Uh, with larger beam widths, it can be quite difficult, and you can generalize in between these spots, but we're getting really good results with the, at the 800 kilohertz. One other, other interesting thing to point out, you see this, there's a cable going across here, um, also gives you an idea of the detection capability at, at, at these high frequencies. Right, so just in summary, um, a T51 has 800 and 400 kilohertz array, so 800 of course for super shallow work, high resolution, and then 400 you can still go down to water depths of about 200 meters, right, so you still have, you know, have a lots of survey, survey area to work in. Um, and it has 170 degrees at all frequencies, so you're not sacrificing any swath width if you want to go up in 800 kilohertz mode. Um, you, you can be super efficient in that sense. Small beam widths, we've got 1024 beams, we have the integrated GNS, INS, it will be a, a, a POSB B system. Um, and the automated controls that most people are familiar with, things like tracker, things like adaptive gate, things like um, uh, we have really good, uh, nice, clean backscatter data as well. I didn't mention that yet. Um, and then finally, these systems work in a, in a single or dual head fashion. So, uh, thanks, thanks for your attention, guys. I can take any questions now if you have them, or, uh, or, or just uh, uh, come to me later. Teledyne Marine. Everywhere you look.